From 1965 to 1970, Jimmy Nolan was in James Brown's band and he really did a lot to put funk guitar kind of on the map and, and help kind of uh, revolutionize the, the sound. And um, he was known for well, what's called a chicken scratch sound, which is uh, playing uh, lots, uh, usually 16th notes and on slightly muted strings combined with, with um, actual notes that are fretted. So. Um, so one of the ways that we can we can get used to playing like that is to constantly have our hand moving in a 16th note motion. So if the beat is one, two, three, four, we can think one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. And then while we're doing that, not just thinking that, but also having our our hand do that one e and a two e and one e and a two e and a three e and a four. So just constantly have that motion going. Even though you may not always be playing notes during that time, you're going to probably be doing muted strings in between. Uh, so this first example we're going to look at uh, is a good example of that. So what we're doing there is, even though we're the, the actual rhythm of, of the fretted chords are like this. We're not just playing those notes, we're actually playing sixteenths in between, so that fills it out. One of the ways to get that across without um, without having it to be too difficult is when we're muting, we don't need to mute, we don't need to hit all the strings, but even just the top three or four strings, so we can hit like a basically I'm playing a D9 chord here. So we're uh, lowest string is muted or not played, and then we're playing fifth fret on the fifth string, then four, five, five, five. This is a very common chord. Get really used to this. If you're going to follow this funk series, you're going to need this chord. Um, it's a movable shape, of course. We've got D here, D flat, C. You can move it anywhere. And the root note is here on the fifth string. Then you've got the third, the flat seven. Then you've got the nine, which gives it its character sound. And then you've got a five on the top. So at first it can be a little daunting if you're not used to barring with this third finger, but once you get that down, it's a nice, e easy chord to grab. You can see it all over the place. You know, all over the place in, in funk stuff. Um, so we're dealing with this chord, and then in between, when we're doing our chicka chickas or the muted strings, we don't need to strum all the notes. It makes it a little bit more cumbersome than necessary. So we concentrate on muting just the top three strings. And all you have to do is let off lightly with your left hand. You can even keep the shape there, but just let off. Uh, and one of the other things we do with the left hand uh, that you'll see a lot of a lot in this kind of music is we go up to a a thirteenth chord. So we're adding the 13th on top with our pinky. All we're doing is going to the 7th fret, or two frets away from our shape, on the top string with our pinky. It's also a movable shape. You'll see that a lot, and it, and it fits nicely in with that, that funk rhythm. And uh, what you'll hear is a lot of times in, in the band situation, you'll hear horns have a nice syncopated rhythm, and the funk ha or the, uh, the drums have a nice funky syncopated rhythm. So we're kind of all all grooving together with with that kind of rhythm. So let's try it together. Um, I'm gonna count you off. We're gonna start on the one, two, three, four. Again. 
and uh, a lot of the earlier kind of James Brown stuff, a lot of his grooves were um, were pretty fast. So we're going to take that up a little closer to the tempo that it might be. Um, this this particular lick isn't um, swiped exactly from from a uh, James Brown song, but it's kind of more in the style of, and you might hear something like uh, more of a tempo like this. So let's try it up there. Once you've got the those chords on your hand, you got the 16th notes going in your right hand. One, two, three, four. And what you can do also to kind of um, make it really stand out and punch through the mix is uh, take your, your strumming pattern and move it back towards the bridge a little bit more, um, towards the back side of your guitar. You can also, um, if you're feeling like, you know, I just can't cut through, but I don't really want to change the settings on my amp, you can also, of course, uh, change your pickup settings, maybe go to the back pickup. So you can get some real bitey sounds by doing that. Um, once, you've, uh, once you've worked that lick up, um, Start start getting comfortable and, and improvising the rhythm with it. Um, this is one of those things where if you if you have a uh, a track that you're playing along with or a song on um, in your collection, it can be cool to kind of see where you can fit in uh, some syncopated rhythms. Just uh, now I'm not really changing what I'm doing with my right hand as far as I've still got the um, a 16th throat rhythm going, a chicka 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 chicka. I'm just kind of uh, pressing down more uh, different times with the left hand to kind of give it some different emphasis. <laughs> So really start to experiment with it and you'll see how it can be a lot of fun to throw that kind of thing in there. So uh, come on back in the next scene, we're going to take a look at another Jimmy Nolan lick.